The person who invented opening locks with wire is a real scoundrel, so how did he do it? We first need to know how a lock works. In everyday life, whether it's a door lock or a padlock, the type we use most often is the pin tumbler lock. It's usually made up of an outer shell and a plug. Several vertical chambers run through the shell and plug. Each chamber contains a spring, a driver pin, and a key pin, and the key pins are all different heights. When no key is inserted, or the wrong key is used, the pins sit across the boundary between the plug and the shell, and the plug can't rotate. When the correct key is inserted, the key's teeth lift the pins so that the bottoms of the driver pins line up at the shear line, which lets the plug turn freely, engages the unlocking mechanism, and ultimately opens the lock. Once you understand that, it's easy to see what the bad actor is doing. But how can two pieces of wire actually open a lock? It's not that complicated. First you insert one wire into the keyway and apply gentle turning pressure to the plug. The metal pins will bind against the plug, because manufacturing is never perfect. Each pin fits the shell slightly differently. At that point, you insert the second wire to manipulate the pins and you'll be able to feel which pin has the most resistance. Push that key pin until you hear or feel a click. That means the driver pin has been pushed out of the plug and dropped into the shear line. Once that pin is set, the other pins will continue to bind, and you then set them one by one. When the bottoms of all the driver pins line up with the shear line inside the plug, the plug can rotate freely and the lock opens. Of course, professional locksmiths use more specialized tools, but the basic unlocking principle is the same. 